Hello everyone, we are down to the last few weeks of the semester for this course. I know some of you, uh, this will be it and you will be graduating and hopefully you will be attending the graduation ceremony in May. If you do, I will actually be there, so I'll make sure I stop by and say hi to you. I'll be one of the faculty members that will be lining up students uh, prior to the event. So uh, please uh, stop by and say hi to me if, if you see me or most likely I'll come find you. So let's get down to business when it comes to what you should be working on for the last remaining weeks of the course. First of all, make sure you review the chapters 1 through 10 within your textbook and the PowerPoint presentations to assist you with completing these remaining assignments. For the assignments themselves, we have the course participation, which really isn't an assignment that you're used to where you would just do a discussion board posting. This is basically saying, hey, just make sure you're communicating with your team. So if you stay in constant communication with your team, you're going to receive 100 points for that for the next few weeks. If I receive feedback from team members that you are not communicating, obviously you will not receive the points. You have a case study, which is the Pepsi Company. You have the Globus Simulations, decisions for year 15. You have the Globus Peer Evaluations, and keep in mind that's the post-game uh, peer evaluations, which I'll cover here in a moment. A new assignment, which is the research paper, which is on disruptive technologies. The annual report, I'll touch on that here in a moment, and the capstone project. So let me go ahead and scroll down. I already covered about the course participation for weeks 13 to 15. Make sure you're communicating with your team and you receive 100 points. It's not 100 points per week, it's just 100 points overall. You have the case study, the Pepsi company that you must complete, which you're very familiar with the case studies by now, so that should be straightforward. You have the last year in the global simulation, which is year 15 decisions. So this is where you can just go all out. You're not worried about year 16, so you will definitely be able to take risk that you normally would not in the past, because if you did, you would pay the price in year 16. You can just go all out and uh, just try to increase your score as much as possible. Then we have the Globe Simulations post-game peer evaluations. Very similar to the mid-game. Just go ahead and complete them within Globus. Keep in mind, I do not share the outcome with your team members, so uh, be honest. I use them for grading purposes. Next, we have the research paper, Disruptive Technology uh, Analysis. So basically, what I'm asking you is, what technology do you believe that will have an impact on how business will be conducted in the future? Um, I'm leaving it wide open instead of it, uh, making it narrow and, and making you choose from certain technology. You get to pick. So the great part about this, if you're currently working somewhere, I would say stick within that industry and try to figure out what's going to disrupt it in maybe 10, 15, 20 years. I would say something as simple as like an Apple Watch. I have an Apple Watch, okay? To me, that disrupted the watch industry. You see about everyone with some kind of similar smartwatch on nowadays. I, I'll go through a McDonald's drive through and the person who's handed me my uh, bag of food, they have a Apple Watch, okay, instead of just a generic watch that we all used to have in years past. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, if you cannot think of one within your current place of employment, uh, um, that's fine. You could pick just any disruptive technology. Next one. We have the annual report. So the annual report, for some of you who've been asking me over and over, I say, hey, these yearly reports shouldn't be they shouldn't they be the same? Shouldn't we have the same format? And the answer would be for a true annual report, yes. But we really have not been doing that. We've just been basically answering some questions, you know, three to five questions per week. This is gonna be a true annual report. So you absolutely going to want to download instructions from step one to make sure you understand what should be included in the report. Now, keep in mind, the research paper is an individual paper. The annual report, obviously, is a team assignment. So the entire team can work on the annual report together. So make sure you download the instructions. Also, do not forget step two, which is reviewing the grading rubric. Obviously, I adhere to the grading rubric. So if I open up the annual report and you meet the criteria, you get points for it. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, if I did not specify in the grading rubric, um, I cannot take points off or, or um, 
or also give you points that doesn't exist within a grade rubric. So keep that in mind. You definitely want to analyze the rubric and the instructions to make sure you have a complete understanding of the assignment. Obviously, once you have completed the assignment, go ahead and upload it to Blackboard. Last but not least, the capstone presentation to the Board of Trustees, which the Board of Trustees is the instructor, which is me. Normally in person, your peers would also listen to the presentation. Obviously, as you know, with the online class, it would be about impossible to get the entire class online at any given uh, day or time. So we are only going to do it within each team. Like we have the introductions at the very beginning of the semester. As you can see, within step three, the team is actually going to go ahead and schedule their presentation with me. First come, first serve. So keep that in mind. But obviously, before that, you want to go ahead and review the capstone presentation details. The grading rubric for the presentation, make sure that you have it uploaded to Blackboard before giving the presentation so I can review it uh, prior to um, you actually presenting online. Uh, that will allow me an opportunity to, to kind of maybe uh, formulate some questions prior to your presentation. Now, when it comes to the online presentations, every team member must participate. So that means you at least, let me say that again, you at least need a mic. I know there was a few minor issues at the beginning of the semester and maybe even uh, some team members, even up to this point, might be having issues with um, their mic. Keep in mind, you have several weeks to get that worked out. I'm just using a mic that came with my iPhone, <laughs> the headset, so I'm not using anything special. Uh, most people use something similar as what I'm using. So I, I can't see it be some big cost to you to, to obtain a mic. Uh, so make sure you have one. If you do not, or if it doesn't work that day, you absolutely will be deducted points. Not the other team members, but you. Okay, so each team member should have certain slides. So if you don't perform during those slides, that's on you. That will not affect the team. Okay, I know every team members for the most part have been trying hard. Teams have been challenging. Hey, that's the real world. That's why we do it. But with that said, at the very end, each team member will be graded based on their portion of the presentation. Okay, so you don't have to worry if you're concerned about a certain team member at the last moment is not completing their slides or doesn't have a mic or saying they might not be there. That's on them. And that's my concern, not your concern. You can always just reach out to me and just provide me the information and I'll take it from there. Now, with that said, hopefully we just keep it all positive. If you got to this point, you have pretty much worked hard. There's a lot of assignments that you have already completed and, and hopefully you are, are finding and will have found a uh, class very valuable to you. Now let's take a look at the year 14 scoreboard. It looks like we have team A, C, E, and F all tied for the year 14 scoreboard at 96. Then we have team B that was second place is fifth because you have so many people tied for first at 95. So just one point behind. And then you have team D, I, H, and G. Then again, G, um, I, I know I hounded you all semester, but you, you're making up ground. You're plus three. So I'm, I'm proud of you there. You're, you're not going backwards at all. Uh, really, there's only two teams that did take a dip, which was uh, Team E, minus five, and then Team B with minus three. So, but not bad, though. But if you think about it, though, if either one don't take a dip, they're number one for year 14. So it just goes to show you every point matters. So. Now let's take a look at Game 2 Date scoreboard. Team B is leading the charge for the game to date at 108. Then you have Team E at 102, Team C at 101, Team F at 100, and then everyone else is pretty in the 90s besides Team G. But like I said, not bad. They're, they're 84. You never know. They might still move up from the bottom, though. Now, keep this in mind, everyone. You're going to be going into year 15. There is no year 16. So you can make decisions in year 15, that you normally would have not made up because you would have paid the price on year 16. So have at it. Make the decisions that are going to be based on gaining the most amount of points for the overall game to date score. You don't really have to worry about too much of anything else since year 15 is it. 
Now, of course, don't get too crazy because you could take a big dip if you make the wrong decisions. But like I said, I just want to emphasize, uh, examine all your, your choices that you have and be bold in year 15. So, all right. That's all I have for this week, and everyone, uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Take care.